Heavenly Father, as I offer these words tonight, I beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are gathered tonight on the Feast of the Apostle Matthias to give thanks to God for the ministry of Bishop Dina Harrison and to pray and prepare to elect a new apostle to serve as Bishop Suffragan for the West region. Matthias, unheralded by many. The Greeks say he was founder of Christianity in Cappadocia and on the coast of the Caspian Sea. Coptic Christians claim he prophesied, prophesied in the city of the cannibals and other meteors. Some say Matthias lost his head in Jerusalem, and others say he died of old age. Dina? (laughs) I did not pick these lessons. They're amazing. (laughs) I would say that you, Dina, are heralded by many. You have ministered across the state and around the world. You have been in some church meetings where I'm pretty sure you thought you weren't going to get out alive. And you made a home among the meat eaters of Texas. <laughs> now, some say that you lost your head staying in Texas this long. But we are all hopeful that you will live a long, happy, and prosperous life. The great theologian, the Bishop of Clement of Alexandria, observed about apostleship The people like Matthias were not chosen by the church or by God to become apostles because of some distinguished peculiarity of nature, but instead were chosen by God and became an apostle because God sees, God foresees God's ultimate work in mission and ministry. This is why apostles are chosen. As Luke writes in the book of Acts, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these you have chosen to take the place in this ministry of apostleship. Indeed, God and God's wisdom and God's good wisdom chose Dina Harrison as an apostle, as a bishop for this time and for this place and for this season in the Diocese of Texas. You, Dina, along with Jeff, Hector, and myself, have created a much more robust ministry of the Bishop Suffragan. In Texas, our Suffragans work more than most Episcopal Church Bishop Diocesans. One has more congregational missions to oversee, more dollars to manage, more institutions to guide. One's impact on the local and wider church is potentially greater. And together, I believe that we have, in good and bad times, have created a powerful, powerful shared episcopacy like none other. Rare indeed, and because of your forthrightness and vision for it. At the celebration of the ministry at Seminary of the Southwest, Dina responded to the accolades with these words. I did not do this alone. What we have done, she said, we have done together. This is true. Yet we must also remind ourselves that not only were you at the bedside of the dying priest or clergy family member as bishop, not only were you there for people at moments of pain and suffering for you, are a shepherd of souls and a pastor to many, including many of us. 
And you also raise the work of Bishop Suffragan to be responsive to the ministry and context as God intended in your election and as all apostles do. Yes, you push congregations with honest truth out of your pastoral equity formed with clergy and laity alike. You challenge people in mission. One congregation said we were struggling to decide if we should do a capital campaign and we were scared. But because of Bishop Harrison's strong words, which I could imagine, (laughs) of challenge, we did it. And we were successful at doing something we never thought we could do before. When Jeff, as rector, had to close his church school, he then called his bishop, friend, peer, and guide. You did not let him shrink from the challenge, but challenged him as you have challenged so many others to rise to God's mission. You guided the seminary of the Southwest in calling of deans and healing of the past and expected greater governance of it as an institution. You helped lead El Buen Samaritano to be one of the strongest community-based organizations in the region, one that is sought after for its wisdom about best practices. You helped St. Stephen's Episcopal School through debt and into health and vitality. You have presented in the formation of clergy for over a decade the future of this diocese, which will serve for a long, good time. You built up programs like the Iona Collaborative that now train more clergy across the Episcopal Church through our Seminary of the Southwest than any other seminary in our country. You have challenged many of us in this room to be better, to be more faithful, and to trust God in Christ Jesus. You've challenged us to be better deacons and priests and bishops. And I and we have not always liked to hear your wisdom. (laughs) Nor your challenges. It was not always comfortable. But we knew it came from prayer. And it came from God. And it came from wisdom. And we knew she didn't want anything else other than the very best for God's church and for us. Yes, we did a lot with you. We have accomplished it all with you. But we did so because God does what God does and has been doing with the apostles since the very beginning. God chose you, Dina, in the power of God's Spirit to be our bishop, and you have served faithfully and with distinction. There is much we could have done on our own, but we didn't have to because you stuck with us. You stuck with the people of the Diocese of Texas, and me, peer, mentor, friend, But this is no mere story of an individual's perseverance. Though there were some persevering times, and she'd be glad to tell you all about them. (laughs) Here, though, is no tale of an individual's sheer will, though she has will and determination, and her family will tell you about that. Here, then, is no mere personal sacrifice for the good of whole. No, and Dina... Larry and the kids, there is courage and personal sacrifice for the good of the church and for God's mission. Here in this moment, we give thanks to God as Isaiah proclaimed in chapter 40 and so well read, because the God of Zion of Jerusalem brought through you, Dina Harrison, good tidings And we did not fear with you by our side, and we saw God in our midst. And God did a mighty work through you, and God was a shepherd through you. And in God's arms you have gently and not so gently carried us. 
Tonight in this room and at this table, we give thanks to God for in you and in your ministry, we have seen God's story enacted. It has been God's strength, God's providence, God's forgiveness, God's friendship, and God's tenacity that is the primary actor in Dina Harrison's life and ministry, and she will not let us forget it. To God we give glory and offer our thanksgiving. To you, we give our greatest esteem. For having lived as an apostle of the Most High God in our midst, and we send you off knowing that you have been faithful to God's call and done what was required. And with that voice echoing in your heart, I hope, well done, good and faithful friend. Together, though, we must turn loving one another into what awaits us tomorrow. For tomorrow comes. And again, a mighty thing. Again, no matter what happens tomorrow, a mighty thing is about to happen in the Diocese of Texas. We pray for God to continue God's providence in sending Texas faithful and true pastors to govern our lives and our ministries and our mission. We know that God knows the hearts of the three candidates and we know and believe God will reveal to us the one whom God has chosen. For the lot will fall on but one tomorrow. In 2008, I sat across from a priest in the diocese. This was before I was elected. And he told me he would not vote for me. And there was a long pause. And then he asked, Andy, what will happen if you are elected? And I stumbled for a moment, unprepared by the question. And I said a few things that I don't even remember now. It, it just sounded like blah, blah, blah in my head. And he said, no. He said, no. Andy, if you are elected by the grace of God, you will be our bishop. Tomorrow, one of three disciples has courageously allowed their names to go forward, whom we have considered, and we now raise you up to the Most High God. By the grace of God, one of you will be our bishop. It will be a good and mighty thing that God will do for this diocese. You see, bishops are not elected. They're made. They are made by the grace of God to be friends of Christ. And in the fire of ministry, they are made to challenge and to urge us forward to the kingdom of God. By grace, they are to be at our sick beds and at our boardroom tables. By the grace of God, they are to send us to do hard work that we do not want to do. And they will demand our best efforts of us. And by the grace of God, they will walk into the room with us, into the rooms we do not wish to go. And every bishop, Dina, Jeff, Hector, no, myself, no, God makes us and forms us for the moment in which we are to serve. We do not choose this, but it is God who chooses and appoints us to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. God have mercy on us. 
God have mercy on us for what we do tomorrow to one of our own and to their family in choosing with God this ministry for them. For what we do tomorrow is to join God in calling from among us an apostle. Sure. Our next Bishop Suffragan for the Western region. But nothing less than an apostle of the Most High God to serve in a long line that stretches all the way back to Matthias. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.